Me and my friend are going to attempt to survive the next 600 days in hardcore Minecraft. And if either of us die at any point, the world is deleted forever. It's day 501 and we are back. It feels so good to be back on a 100 days world, especially the one where all of this started. The first thing we did was say hello to all of the animals in the barn, then to the horses, our villagers, and last but not least, our good friend Waffle. Now I look back on it, it was incredibly lucky that I got a brown panda in my first ever time breeding pandas. That's some crazy luck. But after saying hello to Waffle, it made me realize that we've been very bad owners and we left him for 500 days without a friend. So the next thing to do was fly to a jungle biome to bring him on home. We came across the jungle with a lot of bamboo on day 502, but there was no pandas to be found. But it was time to find another. We were successful on day 503, and we were super happy. But then we remembered that it was a long way home, and it was probably going to take a while. So we began traveling home on days 504 and 505, with our new panda friend in the boat, with Jordan flying ahead to guide me. Eventually, on day 506, home was on the horizon as we saw our creeper farm. It's always a good thing to look out for when we're trying to get back home. As we approach land, Jordan then used this elite piston tactic to get the panda up the hills while still in the boat. I say elite, it's not really elite, it was just clever thinking from Jordan. We then got the panda in as the sun was setting and we bred them, but there was no brown panda. This made us very sad, but we knew we'd get another one. If you don't subscribe in the next five seconds, Jordan is going to kill this poor baby panda for real. As day 507 came around, I restocked some fireworks, bamboo, bred the pandas, and we got another brown panda. Let's go. We spent the rest of the day planning our landscape and we saw a horse just chilling on a tree. Hello there. We've had a big wall around our area for a long time now, literally since the first 100 days. But on day 508, it's time to take it down. Don't worry, we weren't going to leave ourselves exposed. On day 509, we built the wall back up. We did this to give ourselves more room to build and just to have a nicer area of land, really. We then worked on extending the farms and extending them even more and the farming even led on to day 510 and we focused on little things like putting carpets on top of water to make it look even nicer. Between days 511 and 515 we worked on pathways. We didn't want just open grassland. We wanted to make it look really cool and really unique and this will be a theme from now on on this world. We had a glowstone so we didn't need torches everywhere. In my opinion it looks so much better if you have a carpet on top of glowstone that can't be seen. It keeps the area lit up instead of having torches absolutely flooded all over the place. We also bone milled some grass to make it look more natural. And we added another carrot farm as our other one wasn't very big and we had some open space. I grabbed some iron from the iron farm. As you can tell, we had quite a lot. And then I went down to the mines to get some obsidian because we had none at all. You'd think 500 days in, we might have some obsidian lying around. Well, not us. I then crafted the beacon mined out the area for it and placed it down. We realized on day 517 that we had a lot of cluttered shulker boxes. And if we wanted to do more big builds, we'd need a lot more. So before departing for the end, we bred the pandas and then set off on our journey. We hopped straight into the end and on day 518, me and Jordan decided to set ourselves a mini competition between each other. This would be to see who could get the most shulker shells in the next few days. We met up again on day 523 and it turned out that Jordan was victorious. He'd found quite a few more than me. When we got back, we crafted them straight away and placed them all down to see how many we had. As you can see, we had quite a lot. We spent the next two days gathering sand, getting vines and other materials. This was to build a new farm. And if you guys can guess what this is down in the comments, I'll give you a comment a heart. You might be able to tell by the terrain we are in now. On days 526 through 527, we built our first blaze farm. Once the build was done, we were pretty happy. There was a lot of blazes and there was a lot of blaze rods to be made. But we decided to head back to the overworld to get more vines, get more sand, smelt all the sand, get a few lava buckets, as we wanted to make another one. When Jordan found this blaze spawner, he told me that there was another one nearby. So we located the second one whilst killing a lot of mobs along the way. And once we were there, we began construction. The 
blaze farm was now finished on a day 532 we spent the rest of the day killing blazes we took the blaze rods that we got back home with us and put them in a chest on day 533 we stocked up on rockets and we flew off into the distance this is the first video where the world is upgraded to 1.17 so we didn't want to waste any more time without getting ourselves some axolotls we were searching over the oceans and i went down into a cave but before finding one i found some dripstone which would be useful but i then found myself an axolotl jordan found one literally at the same time at another ravine and we then flew back home with our axolotls with us the following morning we wanted some more 1.17 items and this was deep slate for building materials i absolutely love deep slate and i wanted to use it for some builds but we had to spend the whole day flying just to get to new chunks so it would spawn so between days 535 and 537 we mined out the deep slate and we even got some diamonds along the way we were mining more and more deep slate and we got even more diamonds after two days of mining deep slate a large area had been gutted out underground and it was now time to return home once we got home on day 538 we made a deep slate chest put all of what we'd mined into it and we then had to sort out our sorting system behind the next day we decided to do something you guys probably wouldn't expect and that was to tear down our brand new modern mansion we set off some tnt but pretty much manually took it down ourselves for the entirety of the day we took up the floor grabbed some dirt and then placed the dirt as the house is now officially gone which may seem surprising surprising to some of you but trust me we've got some plans a wandering trader passed by so i did the right thing and shot him down as well as his llamas and then we slept at the old house as that was now our only home again but this house is never being brought down i can promise you guys that from days 514 and 541 we did a lot of planning and this planning was for a mini marketplace this would be the design we were going for for a little market hut so we grabbed our materials and we got to work on building our market On day 547, we decided we needed a staircase. The terraformed hill that we made was pretty cool, but we wanted a more aesthetic way of getting up on top of the hill. So using the deep slate that we just got, we made a deep slate staircase with some quartz on the sides. Jordan then built a real cool centerpiece, which was a new fountain. And I thought that was a really nice touch as a centerpiece to be in the middle of our villager trading hall and our storage system. We wanted some sea lanterns, so on day 548, we flew to the Ocean Monument. But we were pounded by guardians as we tried to get some, so we only got a handful before flying home. Jordan then placed the lanterns inside the fountain, and I'm sure at night this will look a lot cooler. Like we'd done at the beginning of the episode, we decided that we couldn't have a fountain and a staircase and a storage system without pathways connecting it all. So for the next two days, we dedicated our time to making some custom paths. We've done a lot of building and a lot of designing so far. So we decided to take ourselves away from what we were doing and build another useful farm. So we needed more materials and with that included turtle eggs. I also realized that I needed a mending book for my silk touch pickaxe. It wasn't yet netherite, but I'm sure I'll get to that another day. So I grabbed a mending book from our villager and we dive straight into the end where we spent the next day mining down a tower for a healthy amount of obsidian. I think altogether we got about two stacks and this was going to be more than enough. Once we'd finished this long and boring task, we flew down to our enderman farm i already had enough xp so straight away i applied the mending book to my silk touch pickaxe and began repairing all of my armor and tools by killing the enderman for xp we were now fully repaired without any fear of breaking stuff and we felt a whole lot better for it on day 554 i brewed some night vision potions and some water breathing potions these would become extremely handy in what we were going to build next before we start building it can you guys guess what we're about to build in the comments down below from day 555 onwards we started building a trident farm we wanted to upgrade our swords to a more devastating weapon we knew tridents were rare so we decided to make ourselves a farm we finished it off by placing hoppers in towards a chest and then made our killing area oh and i also set us on fire with lava almost burnt us to a crisp but we're fine as you guys can see this farm is insanely slow i think we might have done something wrong so we took ourselves back into the overworld and spent two whole days destroying land underwater to improve the spawn rate but again it was slow as hell so after a little bit of research and trialing and testing things we then afk'd it and these were the results on day 565 we got ourselves some torches to mine for more diamonds we flew far away to new chunks and dug down to the perfect layer for finding diamonds jordan started it off in true jordan fashion 
and there was lots of deep slate until finally we got some diamonds. After that first patch of diamonds, I found gold, copper, redstone, coal, literally every ore other than diamonds until on day 567, where we got more and more. Oh, and I also found a skeleton spawner, which was pretty cool. And as we moved on to day 568, we found even more. The next day, we mined up the diamond beacon that we left in the last series. We added our diamonds that we just found from mining, mined down in a new area inside of the villager trading hall, placed down the blocks for the beacon, and yeah... Again, we didn't have enough. I stole some diamonds from my own sorting system. And then we returned mining on day 570. And as we didn't need that much, and we had fortune free, eventually we had the right amount. Luckily for us, we were just short, but there were some spare diamonds in our old house. And I found these when I went to get a never star. I crafted the beacon. We placed the rest of the blocks, activated the beacon, and placed purple glass on top. On day 572, we built a glass sphere. And the next day, we filled it with water. We decided to put our axolotls inside of the water and we bred them to hopefully keep breeding them to have it full of axolotls. On day 574, we started building legs and the structure around the sphere. And on day 575, we got leaves where I was ambushed by skeleton horsemen until getting more. We then worked on the legs of the tower as well as the floor. And this build was a bit different, but overall we were really happy with it. After this, we decided to add some street lamps. These would contrast really nicely with our pathways and keep the area lit up without the excessive use of torches. This is what they look like when it turns to nighttime. On day 578, I AFK'd the iron farm or Jordan AFK'd the gunpowder farm. This was how much gunpowder we had and this was how much iron we had. We then went to go get sand the next day and we had a full shulker box eat pretty rapidly due to efficiency for shovels. Jordan being the daredevil he is, decided to put on a show and jump off the mountain next to us. When we got back, we crafted some TNT. We definitely went overkill with the amount of sand that we got. We checked the gunpowder chest and we had a fair amount left over. I then grabbed some extra rockets and we laid two flint and steels and we were ready. Next thing we did was jump straight through the nether portal. On day 580, we found a bastion that was pretty close to our spawn. We then laced it with TNT. And when I say laced it, I mean filled it with TNT. And Jordan was our demolition expert and set it all off. It didn't all blow up at once, so we set the rest of it off, and this was the result. On day 581, we dug down to level Y15, and Jordan placed TNT whilst I mined it, and I almost died. Well, kinda. Being the jokes that it is, Jordan also tried to blow me up, and it turned out that we placed the TNT too far apart, but eventually, it worked, and I tried flying under the lava, but it's not a great idea, guys. For all of day 582, I went through mining and trying to find through lava all of the ancient debris. On day 583, we were back home, and Jordan gave me all of the ancient debris that he'd collected. We smelted it all, and coincidentally, we had the perfect amount of gold in the chest that we already had to go with it. Using this ancient debris, I crafted neverite ingots, and then crafted the neverite block. We placed it at the end of our path, and phantoms tried ruining the party, but I shot them down pretty well. On day 584, I went to go get the iron, and a lot of it, as well as some jack-o'-lanterns. We then flew off to find a pillager outpost to get a bad omen effect. We found a village soon after, and placed in a ridiculous amount of iron golems. The raid had started, and these iron golems were going in. They were going absolutely ham, uppercutting the pillagers and witches left, right, and center, and even the ravengers. But by the end of day 584, we were victorious with a lot of help from the Iron Golems. On day 585, to thank these Iron Golems for their hard work, we decided to leave a massive iron flag to commemorate them for their great efforts in this raid. We returned home on day 586, got a load of materials together, did a healthy amount of planning, and spent the next 10 days building little houses to go of our marketplace. We wanted to populate this area really nicely, and this is how it turned out. I've got to say we were really, really happy with the results of this. It felt like it gave a purpose to what we were trying to build and there'll be definitely be a lot more of this to come. On day 597, we decided to go back into the nether to get some gas tears. We went to respawn the dragon and prove to ourselves that we could kill him again. So we needed some end crystals. And once we'd made these, we spent the next day preparing by making potions that we'd take into battle. It was day 599 and we were running out of time very fast. We hopped straight into the end, got to the center and respawned the dragon. 
We quickly shot down the towers. We were getting some good bow shots in. And when the dragon perched, we got some good hits in. Until eventually, with one final blow, the ender dragon was dead. We had done it. We'd slain the ender dragon. And that is it, guys. We survived 600 days of hardcore Minecraft. Also, if you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe. It's 100% free and you can always change your mind later. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.